All right, I think we are all settled in and muted then. Um, thank you, Laura, for, for helping me out with hosting duties today. Um, so uh, why don't we go ahead and jump right in. Um, I will pass it over uh, to Secretary Fagan for some introductory remarks. Well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us today. My name is Shamia Fagan. My pronouns are she, her, and I am honored to serve as Oregon's 28th Secretary of State. And uh, this morning, we're going to be talking about our first ever systemic risk report, which draws on six K through 12 audits conducted since 2016 and identifies five key risks that could undermine promising new efforts to boost student success and um, doing everything we can to give Oregon students opportunities is at the core of who I am. I grew up in Wasco County and my dad was a single parent uh, raising three kids by himself. My mom struggled with addiction and homelessness for most of my life. And education was really a lifeline for me. It was uh, teachers and the schools in the Dowles and Dufer uh, that really quite literally changed the outcome of my life and gave me opportunities to see a life beyond the one with my family's struggles and really started me on the path to breaking that kind of cycle of poverty in my family's life. And so uh, I am firmly rooted in the belief that all Oregon students, especially those who are most vulnerable, deserve the same opportunities. And my mission as your Secretary of State is to build trust. That's my mission, to build trust between the people of Oregon and their state government so that the public services can make a positive impact in people's lives. And the critical work of the audits division and particularly the work you're gonna hear about today is really one of the best tools that we have to make sure that the scarce resources that we have here in Oregon are being used to make the biggest impact in the lives of Oregonians who need them the most. So I ordered this new style of, of report to provide proactive support to state leaders while most audits look past at the, at the past for past performance, this systemic risk analysis and report is designed to head off problems before they occur. And obviously that's nowhere is more important than with our students who really only have one chance at being a kindergartner, one chance at being a third grader, one chance at being a seventh grader. It's so important that we get it right. So in order for us to have the best possible outcomes for our kids, we need strong leadership, particularly right now with the challenges faced by the COVID-19 pandemic and the opportunities we have with the Student Success Act, which I was proud to support in 2019 when I was in the state Senate. The Student Success Act is Oregon's fourth major K-12 improvement effort since the 1990s, since I was at Dufer School in the 1990s and graduating from the Dallas High School in 1999. So for the sake of our children and our economy, we have to get this right. So I want to thank our audits director, Kip Mehmet, and our team for their hard work and professionalism. Our audits team takes very, very great care adhering to strict standards of quality and they're an incredible resource, and I'm proud to work alongside you and them to give Oregonians the transparency and accountability that they expect from our agency. So I'm going to pass it over to Kip Mehmet to introduce our team and provide more details on the risk reports findings. Thank you very much, Secretary Fagan. Good morning, everybody. My name is Kip Mehmet. I serve as the Audit Director for the Oregon Secretary of State. My pronouns are he and his. Uh, I want to thank Secretary Fagan for her awesome vision and for her kind words of support um, and, and again for those really compelling words about this report. I appreciate the media's interest in this report. We are issuing, in fact, we issued it at 10 o'clock or we will be issuing it um, at 10 o'clock and it is entitled State Leaders Must Address Persistent System Risk to Improve K-12 through Equity and Student Success. Um, we're really excited with this innovative approach. The secretary referred to sort of a different way of looking at some of our audit work. And the strategy here is really maximizing our audit work. We've issued numerous reports over the last many years, actually, but in the last handful for sure, um, looking at different elements, different programs of K through 12 uh, of our K through 12 system. 
And each of these audits have added value. We've seen some re recommendations implemented and moved along, and we really thank our partners, particularly the, the Department of Education in that. But those multiple audits have given us a unique perspective that, frankly, no other function can have as we see some systemic risk that span outside the borders of each of those audits. And that was the, the why, what compelled us to do this work here. And so we do believe, as the secretary mentioned, we've got some, some um, categorization of these risks across the education system, again, specifically focused on equity, that we can give to state leadership to help guide them as they go forward, specifically with the Student Success Act and the, the large investment the state has made into that program and the, and the, 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 um, the hope and optimism for success there. So again, as the secretary noted, we want to put out this information proactively to help guide that. And to that last point I'm going to make here so we can get to your questions is, really um, appreciative and, and, and think it really bodes well for impact for this report. We've been very engaged with the key leaders, including the governor's office, uh, the Department of Education, the, the deputy superintendent. We vetted this through the State Board of Education, and we've actually uh, also talked with the, uh, <clears throat> the legislative committee chairs in education, and we'll be presenting this report to them in legislative days here in a few weeks. So we've got the message to leadership. Now, we, with your help, we want to get this out to the public, and we really appreciate all of your attention to this. So one last point, I do want to note, this is not <clears throat> the last report we'll be issuing like this, as the secretary noted, we've actually got one underway right now looking at uh, Oregon's water uh, sustainability, safety, and, um, and basically just governance for the future. And so we're having another one of these reports that's kind of looking at systemic governance, risk and challenges and opportunities there. So let's get to the to the report and your questions. I want to first introduce our great team. Andrew Love was the audit manager. Scott Learn and Chris McCants did uh, the work uh, as the project um, partners on this. And Laura Kearns, a great communication specialist who helped write the report and also turn it over here to her to field uh, your questions and answers. So thank you again. And Laura, to you to facilitate the Q&A. All right, thanks, Kip. Uh, if anyone has a question they want to post to the audit team, feel free to use the hand raising function or you can drop it into the chat. I see a hand from Christine. Christine, go ahead. Hi, good morning. Thanks for um, hosting this and answering some of our questions. And um, for those of us who are just now kind of getting a chance to, to look over um, the audit itself, and also because um, you know TV is kind of a visual medium, so it's nice to have you guys talking visually about this stuff. If, you, if somebody could kind of overall, I know you found a lot and there's a lot of information, but if you could kind of parse it down to kind of summarize, what it is that, that you found that you think are kind of the most important points to get across. Absolutely, and I, Scott, I'm gonna call on you to do that and maybe just run through our highlights page. Uh, and I think that'll get to the, to the reporter's great question there. Yeah, Christina, I think what we're trying to say with our risks is that, we want to make sure that state leadership keeps a really close eye on the Student Success Act, how it's being implemented by ODE, how it's um, being received by districts, if it's actually leading to improvement um, in student success. So it's a $1 billion investment a year um, of tax money. So uh, it's such a major effort. We think it's a really key thing for leaders that kind of keep their eyes on the price and uh, make sure that, that uh, this program is really well implemented and has a lot of success. Scott, I'm wondering if you could just go over maybe this, the five general buckets that we had. I know there's a lot in there, but just kind of the five categories of risk that we've kind of um, put out to leadership. Um, so just to give the reports a little bit more context on, on the sort of structure of the report. Yeah, so there's five risks that we identified. I, um, I'll just run through them, I guess, real quick. Um, these are all important from an internal control auditing standpoint. Um, so one is for leaders to make sure to um, watch how ODE is monitoring performance um, of districts and supporting districts as well to keep a close eye on that. 
Um, we also, for our second risk, want to make sure that the results that districts are getting, that the system is getting, are thoroughly reported. And also, um, you know, just as importantly, that the challenges they're facing are uh, thoroughly reported. In our previous K-12 efforts, reform efforts, we think one of the big reasons that they didn't really stick was that districts would have concerns, other stakeholders would have concerns, ODE would be running into problems, and those challenges weren't adequately addressed. So we want challenges to be really, you know, transparently publicly reported and addressed by the legislature, the governor, the state board of education. Then our third risk is, you know, we think that there needs to be a lot more scrutiny and guidance on spending. Um, we've got some fast rising costs. So we want to make sure that um, ODE, which has some pretty good capacity to analyze spending and help districts analyze spending, is doing just that. And um, so we want leadership to make sure that that is happening. And then our fourth thing is uh, ODE and the legislature have um, some standards for how districts operate. Right now, the um, clarity and uh, assurance on those standards is, is pretty low. So we wanna make sure that leaders, uh, make sure that ODE is having those standards be crystal clear and that also that ODE is able to have the ability, have the staff to be able to make sure that districts are um, implementing those standards appropriately, particularly districts that are struggling um, to have students succeed. And then our last thing is governance and funding stability, our last risk. Um, so here we're kind of talking to the governor and the legislature, look, there's a lot of new things that get thrown at ADE, ODE every legislative session. There's a lot of new programs. There's a lot of turnover. There's a lot of short-term focus. And we're saying, okay, it has part of keeping our eyes on the prize here. We got to have a long-term focus. We got to be really careful about how much work we're piling on ODE, ODE and districts. We got to make sure it's not dupl duplicative. We've got what we think is a fairly strong plan here as a state to improve K-12 education. And so we just want leadership to make sure that they're focusing primarily on that and not adding a lot of new complexities to the work that ODE and districts have to do. All right, thanks, Scott. Uh, Christine, did you have a follow-up question? Um, no, that was great, but I, I do have a follow-up question, but not necessarily to what Scott um, kind of delineated. Mostly just wanted to make sure I understand. So um, is this kind of a unique um, audit because is it like taking all of your other audits that you've done for K-12 kind of part, like looking at all the other audits you've done and then saying, hey, this is what we have found based on all these audits we have done, like cumulatively, here's something that you know, makes up this systemic risk report. Is that the correct understanding? You are, Christine, that's absolutely right. It's not an audit. I wanted, that's the one, it's a little semantical for us, but it is important for the public to know that. That doesn't mean it doesn't go under those rigorous quality control standards the secretary referenced in her comments. Uh, we, you know, we feel the evidence is strong. And again, this report's been vetted through all those key stakeholders I talked to you about, they've all seen it. So, uh, but yeah, this is, to your point, you hit it really well. It's kind of, we were initially calling this a capstone report, but it didn't quite fit what it was. But it's just this idea that we can um, kind of meta-analysis these reports and summarize them in, in, and add new value, not just rehashing our findings again that we had in the other reports, but really figuring out again with leadership, you know how these can really be looked at more systemically. But yeah, your your uh, your your summary there is right on. Okay, thank you so much. All right, next hand I saw is from Natalie. Hi, thank you. Yeah, this is Natalie Pate from the Statesman Journal. Um, I would, I'm not sure if this is a question for Scott or the whole team, but I'm curious. It sounds like a lot of the things um, that you're pointing to, a lot of the new developments are really centered around, like you said, keeping your eye on the prize and more of a reminder to stay true to what was initially baked in to the Student Success Act and the efforts that that took so long to, to bring that to fruition. So I'm wondering if you can uh, expand a little bit on, are there things in this report that we should be paying attention to in terms of things that have actively not gone well or things that aside from new additions or changes to just be aware of, but things that have not met uh, the, the bar that didn't, that didn't reach where we were aiming for. 
Hi, Natalie. This is Andrew Love, the Performance Audit Manager. I think, you know, this report is accumulation of all the things that we've seen and heard some of these risks. You know, they come from, you know, specific audit reports that focus on a one-time risk that we see at that point. You know, but like our director was mentioning, we are in a unique position where we spent many years as an outsider looking into this program. And we wanted to identify some of the holistic challenges that um, weren't working uh, specifically the things that, you know, should spark your interest would be, you know, the governance and funding stability. We talk about, you know, the last 10 years, we've had four major changes. We talk about uh, the number of new grants that the you know, ODE has to administer with new ideas that are coming from the legislature. Uh, the other piece that is, you know, important to me is the enforcement of district standards, the Oregon's Division 22 standards. Division 22 is really the state's way to reaching into the schools and setting expectations. And you know, the problem we see with the Division 22 standards is that they're, they lack clarity in terms of you know, its enforceability and allowing performance to persist. Uh, we want them to focus on those and narrowing the, you know, the clarity on those and provide expectations within those. And also, you know, we would like for the state to put more resources to um, check to see if districts are following said um, standards. Yeah, and Natalie, I'd just add that, um, you know, with, with the other three risks, we've found problems in past audits in all these areas, like, you know, um, uh, ODE's performance monitoring, transparency on results and challenges, um, adequate spending scrutiny and guidance from ODE. So our prior audits are all informing these risks that we're finding. <laughs> um, and so we, we, there's been, you know, we've made recommendations, ODE's made efforts to improve, they're doing so in many cases, but um, we, uh, we think based on our past audits that these are all things that it bodes well to keep an eye on, not just for um, you know, sort of following the, the guidance of the Student Success Act, but also because we've yeah. seen issues with these areas in the past. Can I ask just a, a quick follow-up question to that? So to be clear, the, the report that we're discussing today is as up-to-date as possible with how they've responded to those past critiques and audits. Yeah, you know, it's not, a, it's not an audit where we've gone in and looked and you know, tons of detail at every single, uh, you know, step that they've taken, but we did ask them to update us. We've done follow-ups on most of these audits. Um, so it's, I'd say it's pretty well up to date. I don't, we haven't covered every single phase. Okay, thank you. All right, next hand is uh, Elizabeth. Hello, thank you for um, holding this. I wanted to ask about, the um, conclusion that, that y'all came to in the report about ODE's lack of in intervention has been a bigger problem than infringing on local control. I'd love to hear more about how the um, results from the past audits, how, how the team came to that conclusion. Was it just a slow implementation of recommendations or, or was there something else? Um, and are there examples of how the ODE might better intervene in the future or just provide oversight? Thank you. Yeah, to answer the last part of the question first, you know, the, the Student Success Act and some of the other important um, programs are set up so that it's more of a collaboration and ODE is not really very heavy handed unless things get to it. Your student success is extremely low and the districts don't seem to be doing anything about it, which I don't think ODE really anticipates. So, um, you know, going forward, we don't see it as, as we don't see the primary risk being infringing on local control. In the past, we've seen instances where um, ODE is reluctant to, um, you know, provide advice, provide guidance, be aggressive um, in trying to improve student success for fear of infringing on local control. Um, and there's some examples in, in, the re, in the report of that, you know, at a, at a high level. Um, we just think that ODE's, you know, concerned about, um, you know, local control in general, also about hearing from legislators when, when they get affronted by, um, you know, what they see as an infringement on local control. And we think it's important 
for legislators and other state leaders to, um, you know, sort of recognize that ODU is taking a balanced approach with the Student Success Act and some of these other important programs. Elizabeth, did you have a follow up? Did you have a second question, if that's okay? Uh, if you want sure. to hold on to it for just a moment, for the next hand that I saw is from Les. Sounds good. Thanks. Yeah, I, I actually have a question for Kipper Scott and then one for the secretary if possible. Uh, what are the impediments to advancing your recommendations? Uh, you're mapping out the summary of, of these past audit reports. You're advancing new recommendations. What do you see as the impediment to moving forward with what you're recommending? Kip, I can start on that. If well, you, you want. start, and I'll, I'll finish. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think less what um, that last risk of governance and funding stability. It's hard, you know. I mean, it's democracy. There's built-in turnover in the legislature and the governor's office. There's usually turnover um, in OBE, you know, at high levels, um, and and also within the agency itself. So it's. Um, I think it becomes more difficult for people to maintain a steady focus. And that's partly, or a big part of why we issued this report is to just set a marker for like, hey, here's what to keep, here's what to keep an eye on. Or, you know, there's gonna be a new governor soon. Legislators as always will turn over. So we're trying to just say, hey, this is, this is what we think you should keep an eye on um, and have this, available and we're always available you know we've like um kip was mentioning at the beginning we've talked to all state leaders we're going to testify we're always available to talk about this more so we're hoping we can play a role in in helping um you know define what might be a might be a good focus for state leaders going forward and just a brief comment out on what Scott said, you know, and, and I wanted to note this obviously to the prior question as well about the impacts of the pandemic as far as the report being current and, and it is, but and we do note in there, but the pandemic obviously um, it caused a lot of disruption in the system and, and made it difficult to move forward on any initiative. So I just wanted to acknowledge that kind of obvious point, but it's one we want to know here. You know, one reason for the report is a great question, Les, um, because at, the, at a high level, I mean, these are not surprising and, and they're pretty generalized buckets of risk that a lot of people inside the system are very well versed on, state local control, obviously, and others. But what we try to do is pro provide that audit information and analysis that can pr provide, if you will, some, some quantification and some, some, some objective-based kind of analysis out there and just serve as a neutral, non-biased party in this that we can kind of raise some of these issues to inside and outside the system to maybe hopefully make it a little bit easier to, to talk about and, and lead in and compromise and, and use this. We're hoping this can be a resource for years to come of, you know, these five general risks, how are we doing in those? You know, the state local control, that's a, that's a there's, no, um, there's no way to, to get really precise on what that is. So there's gonna be a lot of leadership and negotiation on that. But we thought with our kind of, you know, kind of cold steely audit approach to this and just kind of going, hey, here's what's happening, you know, that we can facilitate and maybe even make it a little bit safer for, for the stakeholders to talk about this and then to educate the general public on some questions they may wanna be holding their leaderships accountable to and some questions they may wanna follow as they follow their children through um, the K through 12 system. And if I may ask the secretary question. So mm -hmm. Secretary, speaking of leadership, so if these recommendations are followed, again, just stepping back and, and looking at keeping your eye on the ball, how would you expect education of children in Oregon to measurably improve? Thanks, Les. So again, the five different um, risk assessments that Scott laid out earlier is, is essentially the five different places that we expect them to improve. I mean, at the high level, right, we need to not see a gap for students of color. Uh, we need to not see a gap for students who are maybe don't speak English as a first language. We need to not see a gap for students who are in, you know, high poverty schools or high poverty communities. And so that's, I mean, that's for me, the North Star um, to making sure that we're serving everybody is how we're serving the kids that are the most vulnerable in our communities. Thank you. All right, Elizabeth, back to you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask, I don't know the, how long this has been in the works, but um, I wanted to ask if if the um, 
if there's any consideration or, or thoughts about um, how districts and the state is spending the, the ESSER American Rescue Plan funds, um, just thinking of, of another big funding stream um, similar to the Student Success Act in, in a, a few ways. Um, but if that was something that the auditors thought about or if there's any suggestions in the report that might align to, to that spending as well. Elizabeth, there's nothing in the report on that. You know, we've discussed that, but we didn't address that in this report. I'll just briefly add one, one recent sort of internal change management strategy we've adopted uh, is kind of um, putting our, our expertise in static teams. So we do have a lot of expertise in education. So we have put together more of a static team under Andrew's leadership and Scott and Chris, of course, are on that team and other people on our staff. So part of, just to get to your general question, Elizabeth, is, is our annual risk assessment. And so absolutely we're aware of that funding. It's in our risk profile. Um, obviously auditing um, education um, is a, there's a, there's a lot of different risk and areas you can go, but yeah, that's on our radar for sure. And I can't commit that we're gonna be looking at it for sure or we're not, but it's definitely in our radar and, and something that's very important. Chris, did you have something to add? I did, I just wanted to say, um, one thing that makes this report different from what we've done in the past we didn't go in and do new, you know, look at evidence of what they're doing right now. That would be more in the scope of an audit. But Scott and I, between us, have a lot of expertise in past education audits. And we were able to pull out kind of two kinds of themes. One is patterns that we've seen um, over and over in audits that we think somebody at this point above the level of ODE kind of needs to really be on top of to make sure that ODE is addressing those things we're seeing over and over. And the other piece is when we audit ODE, our recommendations are to agency leadership. Um, but we see throughout audits places where they can't move forward with a recommendation or there isn't a recommendation we can make to them because changes need to be made at the legislative or policy decision level above them. And so this report is addressed to leaders who can kind of take on those roles of keeping ODE on the right track and trying to remove or improve some of those barriers that have been um, challenges to us in, in past and in theory future audits so that this current Student Success Act can move forward hopefully successfully. All right, I see another hand from Les, go ahead. Yeah, I'm interested uh, Kip and team and, and the secretary, what was the reaction uh, from the leaders of the, the legislative committees and from the governor's office to what you presented to them? You're talking about sort of raising these policy issues to a broader leadership plane. What what did you hear back from them? I let Sorry, you. I will jump in with that. I, I'm um, That was a really big part of our strategy on this report. Um, as we've all alluded to in this conversation today, this is a unique report. You know, we didn't have our standard audit processes where we have an in, entrance conference and we just set a scope and all the, all the really important communication protocols we have with our audits with people we're auditing. So yes, we brought the Department of Education, most specifically, you know, Colt Gill and his team in early on after we had drafted the report. This is our report. We did it independently. Um, there was no other people writing our report, but we certainly vetted it through him and his team and had a couple of iterations. And that's how we made sure it was current to the other reporter's question. And we also engaged actively with the governor's policy advisor who were very supportive of this report from day one. Again, I think there's an interest in leadership here to see these higher levels, you know, like, like Chris just said, where they can't really get in the department space through our audits. So I think a lot of this is enlightening. And then finally, I think the same goes with the State Board of Education, the, the chair and co-chair. We vetted it through them and talked to them and had a good positive response. And then uh, finally, with the legislative leadership, they were very, the chairs of the two education committees were very, um, very intrigued by the report and compelled, like I say, enough to have us in the committee. So Les, to your good point, we, we've already seen the conversation start and it's been embraced. There's been no pushback from any of those entities on this. And that's very promising because there is some tough, um, tough challenges here outlined. And, and again, these systemic risks are not gonna be easily um, addressed. Thank you. All right, not currently seeing any hands up. So again, if anyone has a question, feel free to put your hand up or you can drop it into the chat. Elizabeth, go ahead. Just one quick last one um, about follow-up. I know you mentioned uh, another report 
similar to this one about water and sustainability. Um, but will there be any other, you know, markers in five years of, of how education has improved and, and how these risks have been addressed? Hi, Elizabeth. This is Andrew again. You know, Kip mentioned in, the, uh, in his response previously that he stood up a static team and I'm the manager for that static team. You know, I would say that this report could mirror as a roadblock to, um, I mean, excuse me, as a, uh, a map to where the audits division will be leaning into for audits in the future. These are areas that we see as high risk and moving forward, we will be doing some work in almost all of these areas. All right, any additional questions? Going once, going twice. All right, looks like that might be it for questions. Uh, team, any final thoughts from any of you? Appreciate everybody's time and great questions. Thank you. Likewise. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for shining a light on this. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions or need anything else, feel free to contact Ben Morris or myself. Uh, happy to help you out. So thanks again for joining and enjoy the rest of your day.